I don't think there's any one of us who doesn't want to be rich. And it's probably the one thing that occupies our mind and our thoughts, causes us the most stress and anxiety, and guides our life's decisions more than anything else. And we assign so much value to this one thing, and we place all our hope and our trust and our security in it, and we measure our value and our worth as compared to everyone else in it, and we think, if I just had this one thing, I'll be happy. But if I don't, the want and the worry will destroy me. So we end up trading our lives for it. Now I'm not going to sit here and just say, oh, don't desire wealth, that's bad. That's unrealistic. And we're wired that way for a reason. What I would say is, it's not that we desire wealth too much. It's that we don't desire it enough. We're just desiring the wrong type of wealth. There once was a rich man and his driver. The rich man had it all. Obscene amounts of money, celebrity status, a global empire, and all the shiny things his heart desired. He wasn't a bad person, but he wasn't necessarily good either. Sure, he promoted all the right causes at all the right times as long as the cameras were rolling. But he lived mostly for himself, for success, for his own glory, and completely indifferent to the person standing right next to him. Unless they provided some sort of use, of course. His driver was a poor man. Never really had much of anything. Struggling to support his family. Living in a broken down old house. Pleasant. Dignified. But basically four walls and a roof. He was a good man. You never heard a negative word from his mouth about anyone or anything. And you could count on him for everything. He lived his life totally for others, never once counting the cost to himself. First, for his beloved wife, whom he held above all the treasures of all the world. Then, his beloved children. Then anyone else, who needed a hand, an extra donut, a little cheer, or just to feel like a human being again. One wintry day while driving home, they hit a patch of ice, slid off a bridge, and that was the end. When they came to, they found themselves in the back of an old cab, driving down the most beautiful road they've ever seen. Where are we? The driver asked. We're in what you would call heaven, the cabbie answered. I'm taking you to your new homes. When they pulled into the first drive, the first thing they noticed were the crowds of people. Oceans of them. Cheering. Celebrating like one of those parades you see when a war ends. Rising up at the end of the drive was the biggest, most beautiful, well, that's just it. We don't have the words to describe it. Mansion or castle or palace don't even come close. Welcome home, the cabbie said to the driver, and the crowds erupted. The rich man's eyes widened. If this is the driver's home, he thought. I can't wait to see mine. As they drove a little further, outside of what seemed to be the main area, they pulled down a side road and up to a little house. Pleasant, dignified, but basically four walls and a roof. Welcome home, the cabbie said to the man. No, 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 this is a mistake, the man complained. You switched the houses. There's no mistake, the cabbie answered. We did the best we could with the materials you sent us. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, or moths and rust destroy, and thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and rust do not destroy, and thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Which one of these would I rather? Seriously. All the wealth and power and glory that this world could give me? That I could enjoy for like maybe 30 years? Or all the wealth, power and glory that God could give me? For eternity. And which one of these do I work and suffer and stress and trade the better part of my life for? 
And which one of these do I think is a better place to put all my hope and trust and security in? And if I'm going to measure my value on my wealth, then which one of these do I think is a better indicator of my worth, of who I am? Now, I know some of us are thinking, yeah, well, that all sounds great, but I kind of want wealth and we kind of need wealth. Does this mean it's just one or the other and we have to be poor the rest of our lives? This really has nothing to do with being rich or poor, and we can do a lot of good with wealth in this world. But this has to do with which one of these does my heart really belong to? Deep down in that inner core of our heart, which one do I really desire? Because it can really only be one. Right after Jesus says, store up treasures in heaven, he says, you can't serve two masters. And don't worry about where you're going to eat or drink or where. Those who don't believe in me run around after all this stuff. Your father knows what you need. Seek first him, his kingdom, his goodness, and he'll take care of everything else. That's a promise. One I've found to be 100% true. So ask yourself, if I were to die today, and God willing I even make it to heaven, what would my home look like? Has my life sent up enough material? Would it be some dingy little shack outside of town? Or something else that eyes have never seen and ears have never heard and no imagination could possibly comprehend? Right in the center of it all. So let's start building treasure in heaven right now, today. How? By our goodness, our love, our sacrifice. By our lifting that person up and helping that person out. By our turning from that temptation and resisting all that negativity. Our hope when we feel hopeless. Our trying to understand rather than just get annoyed. Our forgiveness as he forgives us. Our patience with ourselves, with each other and whatever this world's gonna dump on us. Our bearing with our own flaws, gently. Our bearing with each other's flaws, gently. Our bearing with all our suffering, gently. Our standing with truth, even when it costs me something. By our turning to Him, when we wanna to turn to everything else. By our loving of everyone, even the people we don't really like. By our faith, our trust, our prayer from the heart. By basically two things. By trying to imitate Him, and all my thoughts, words, and actions, and by my trying to choose His will in every part of my life over my own. Now, I know I'm going to get a bunch of comments that say, yeah, but aren't you just saying just do good to get some reward in heaven? Isn't that kind of selfish? And yeah, that's an imperfect motive. We want to move to a perfect motive, which is I'm doing it for the giver of the gifts, not for the gifts themselves. Or in other words, I'm doing it because I love the giver of the gifts, not to get the gifts themselves. And isn't that why we do anything for anyone we love? I mean, if we do something for our mom, who we love very, very much, we're not doing it to get anything in return. We're doing it just because it's her. And what does our mom do in return? She showers us with all her love and food and hugs and kisses and everything she has. And not because we may have done some tiny little thing for her. It's because she loves us more than anything else. And that's just who she is. Now God, who has treasure beyond anything we could ever possibly comprehend, whose generosity could never be matched, just wants to shower us with all of his treasure and power and glory and everything he has. Not because of some tiny thing we may or may not have done, but because he loves us more than anything else. And that's just who he is. And that's what this is all about. Not some transactional thing, but this mutual, I just want to give you everything I have. Okay, now I'm going to go next, but around here. But picture your heart like a container. And the bigger our capacity to love and give of ourselves here, the bigger our capacity to receive him and all of his love and treasure and everything he wants to give us there. Does that make sense? So this is our purpose. This is what we're here for. This is what we work for. 
This is where we put all our hope, trust, and security. This is where we find our worth, our identity, and this is what we're made to desire. Not some new house or car or money or power or sex or all these tiny little things down here that are going to pass away just like that. Boring. But for real, lasting, eternal treasure, beyond anything we could possibly measure, with him. Okay, I gotta end this thing. But just one last thought to try to tie it all together. Try these two things every day for a week and see if it makes any difference. First, just take five minutes every day. Close your eyes and place yourself in your home in heaven. I know we can't really imagine it, but we can go there in our hearts. Surrounded by countless angels and saints and generations of family and people, all who love you perfectly. Face to face with the living God, with unlimited access to all his mystery. And just rest there. And the second thing is this, then just ask yourself, what am I doing today to work towards this, to build treasure in heaven? And keep that in the back of your mind throughout the day. Everything is an opportunity. And the more we shift the power of our infinite God-given desire from all these things to all these things, the more all our worries and anxieties and stress just get smaller and smaller and fade away. And the more we grow to desire these things, the more we're going to want to build this kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. And the more our hearts really start living there, the more we really start living heaven here. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. And if you made it this far, I really appreciate it. This is the part that I hate, but everyone always asks me, how come you don't make more content? Well, I need your help. I've posted some links below of ways you can help support I Am Beggar through PayPal, our website, or come join us on Patreon. It's all just about getting more stuff out to more eyeballs and hopefully touching more souls. I appreciate it very much, and I appreciate every single one of you who's ever watched one of these videos.